Welcome to the latest episode of the Speed Group Driver Report. I'm Kevin Lee, and we visit today with Liam McNeely of J. Howard Driver Development and the USF Juniors Championship. And a lot of good things to talk about recently for Liam, who is uh, staying in the States in between rounds. How are you today, Liam? Yeah, we're good. How are you, Kevin? I'm great. Thank you. Let's go back to Mid-Ohio, the most recent round for the USF Juniors Championship, getting a chance to run with the entire USF Pro Championship, Indy Next, and Indy Car as well. And it went quite well. Fast all weekend. We'll kind of work back in reverse order and talk about your second win of the season from pole. But it was anything but a straightforward win. How did you get it done? Yeah, um, far from straightforward, I'd, I'd say. Um but yeah, obviously we qualified on pole and um, had pole for race one and race two. So got a good start off the line in race two. And um, yeah, uh, had a caution at the, at the end of lap one. And then, yeah, it was a, uh, it was pretty, uh, yeah, far from my ideal. You know, um, I got a bit of a gap at the start of the race, but then um, had a bit of pressure from behind uh, sort of midway through the race. Uh, and yeah, it was a, uh, just trying to defend and you know try and keep him behind and sort of get a bit of a gap whilst uh still trying to you know go forward and stuff like that but then we got a a full course yellow right at the end of the race uh and that just led to a one lap dash so got got a not so good restart but that sort of led on to sort of uh, a good turn two uh and then i got a good exit up there and that was uh that was it really and then over the line in, uh, in P1, which was brilliant. So it's preferable, obviously, to lead the entire race. But when you do have a restart, when you're leading, you haven't learned anything about the people that you're fighting with. And they have been able to learn about you. How challenging is that? And is that sometimes a benefit for somebody that's been chasing someone the entire race? Yeah, definitely. I think it's always better to sort of be chasing someone the entire race because you know where they're quicker and where they're a bit slower than you. And um, yeah, you just sort of find out small little details, but it's quite hard to figure out that sort of stuff when you're looking in the mirrors. So yeah, I mean, I got I got a good restart and that sort of got got me the got me over the line really. So yeah, really happy. So let's go through the entire weekend now a little bit quick in practices uh especially the ones that were straightforward there was a little bit of rain at different times so you win the pole with the two fastest laps you have pole for both races and you maybe could have swept the weekend tell us what happened in race one yeah race one was a uh, pretty hectic to be honest um obviously the track we couldn't really see the track before we went out so everyone started on wets uh, and then on the out lap it was just way too dry for the wet so I got as far into the race that as I could with the wets. Although I would have liked to have gone to uh, slick tires a little bit earlier than I did. Um, and we still went on to slicks about lap five. Uh, and that ultimately got me the extra point for leading the most laps. So it, 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 it goes some different ways sometimes. So yeah, we went to slicks about lap five and then because, because of the, the missed timing of the full course yellow as well, I got behind the safety car at just the wrong point. So everyone uh, boxed when the, with the full course yellow on the, when it came out straight away, but I had to follow the full course, uh, the safety car for the whole lap, whole first lap. So that basically lost me a lot of time. Uh, and then when we did go to slicks, yeah, we came out at like 14th or something like that, but we started a lot. We started over the half the race to go. So we made up a lot of positions and finished third, but you know, the, the car was good enough to win the race. So ultimately, you you led the most laps, and you could have been the hard charger too, because you probably passed the most cars. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So, yeah, it, it goes some some different ways sometimes. And was this just a matter of because uh, most waited to pit until the caution came out? That's always kind of the the dilemma as a track is drying. And had you already passed the pit entry when the caution came out, and it just benefited those that hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I literally passed the pit, pit entry as the full course yellow came out, so it couldn't have been any worse timed. And then all the cars behind me just just popped straight away. So, yeah, unlucky, unlucky in that sense. So getting a podium out of that was really good considering the way it could have ended up and, and how the bad luck worked out. 
And speaking of some bad luck, let's go back to the previous round since we last chatted at at VIR in June. You had good pace there that weekend. You ran up front. Uh, didn't really get the ultimate result that that you probably deserve through things out of your control. So when things aren't going your way, um, what what can you do to kind of move forward? How do you try to just simply put that to back your mind and just get what is available? Yeah, I mean, I think just uh, just going into the next round for the focus. I think that's what we've done um, at, at Mid Ohio. So yeah, I mean, obviously. There's not a lot you can do when things, you know, don't go your way. But, you know, we, we stayed focused and obviously picked up a lot of points at mid-Ohio. So, uh, yeah, we made up for we made up for VAR for sure. You did learn how to survive without a front wing, though. You finished fourth running how many laps without a front ring, a front I mean, wing in that race? Five or six. So it, was, <laughs> uh, it, it felt like a lifetime. <laughs> so what's different with the car? Just overall lack of grip uh just just fully lost i mean i was um i was not unlucky it was a bit unlucky but i sort of went for a move and it just wasn't really on so i had to make sure that i stayed in fourth pretty much and i did everything that i could so now you stand second in the championship only nine points out max taylor is who you're fighting with and max is going to have the advantage of having more track time he actually won in juniors and in USF 2000, he's running full, com- uh, complete campaigns. He ran most of the series last year, so he's got the uh, edge in experience. But th- what what is this doing for you, getting to fight with someone like this that you know is on his way to bigger and better things too? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to have extra track time, right? So, you know, with with my lack of track time, I think it's it's going pretty well. So, yeah, I know – really good to race him and and stuff like that but you know um just fully focused from our side to you know pick up the best results that we can at road america and portland and hopefully hopefully finish up the championship strong yeah still six rounds remaining 10 of 16 are complete triple header uh, at road america in august and then you finish the season with indycar again triple header uh at portland uh between now and then you've got almost a month what kind of things are you going to be doing well, um, I'm actually doing uh, a race in USF 2000 in Toronto uh, next weekend. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, yeah, it's it's going to be good to, you know, get on a street circuit for the first time and, um, you know, be on an IndyCar weekend again is always cool. So, yeah, just to, just mainly trying to pick up as much experience as I can for, for hopefully a full campaign next year on, uh, on arguably the, the hardest street circuit that we go to. So there's no eye racing for a street race like Toronto. How do you prepare for that? Especially, uh, and it's it's not a new car. It's the same car, but it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit more power. Yeah, just just a bit more power, and um, the brakes are a bit better. So, you know, not too much to adapt to from that side, but mainly sort of, um, you know, looking as much video as I can. And um, if there is a mod on a, a set of course, I'll definitely be driving that for sure. But, you know, I, I know where the track goes. It's sort of, just trying to um you know pick up my vision and stuff like that and trying to get past the walls look past them and stuff like that so it's going to be you know a different sort of way to look at a weekend you know i'll be you know trying to not go for it on the first lap just building up up to it through practice and you know arguably i might you know do my fastest lap right at the end of the weekend but you know i'm still looking to pick up the best results that i can and uh hopefully um help help my teammate uh trying to get some points back in the championship as well so breaking news here in the speed group driver report liam mcneely makes his debut in usf 2000 at toronto as a part of the indycar weekend in mid-july you can follow along on the usf pro championships youtube channel and all of our social channels as well best of luck and then uh, best of luck in the final six rounds we'll chat with you again soon thank you liam thanks kevin liam mcneely j howard driver development usf juniors and now usf 2000. That's the latest edition of the Speed Group Driver Report. I'm Kevin Lee.